Welcome to PJ Chain Design. Today we are going to talk about this anniversary band and how to arrange the pattern and the stone onto the band. Are you ready? Let's get started. Let's take a look on this band first. The bottom part shouldn't be too much of a problem. We can just sweep uh, a cross section to get this one. On the top part, they actually are the same element, but what is crucial is what is the size of a stone and that's going to fit in into this area. So we need to figure out uh, that part. So that's starting from the scratch. So that's starting from the front view for this ring. I'm going to type in zero here and set it up the diameter for 16 millimeter. Then I'm going to do the design for my ring. I would like to have my ring is a little bit taper. So uh, let's use a rectangle corner corner. On the top, I would like it to be much wider. So maybe six or um, six millimeter wide or, or a little bit less here and give it a little bit corner there. All right, and uh, let's actually just mirror that to the other side or you want to use a rotate that is fine so i simply just want to mirror and snapping into the zero move it to the bottom on the bottom right here i would like it to be a little bit narrower so maybe get it close to three and a half so then we have um, everything here let's go ahead to use a line vertical um, command and type it zero so they will align perfectly there to making into a ring we can use the sweep one rail you go the rail and you go cross section here and here just need to make sure the arrow is aligned in this case it's inside of a ring shank and they are facing the same direction right so you will only get half of it is because you're telling the rhino go from this cross section to this cross section and all we need to do is the close sweep and tell the rhino you go back to the first cross section and then we hit okay then we'll get this ring here all right the second thing is we need to figure out how is that s shape is working there so let me hiding this uh ring here so it's not bothering us and what i like to do is create a curve coming here and going like this more like a s shape here so we are going to turn on the grid snap and we're gonna snap in here coming over here and then here and then coming over here so we create this beautiful shape here let's bring in the stone and let's place the stone right here next to it uh, you can make the stone whatever size you want it um, but what we wanted to do is put place a stone here and moving this bar next to it something like this i leave a little uh, bit distance is because i wanted to because i want to make sure that uh, the prong has a room to go so what i need to do is actually having this two point and it's kind of curve up adjusted something like this and maybe i wanted to curve and maybe i wanted to curving a little bit more so it's talking to the other side and of course, uh, after change it, it might be slightly different there. And uh, we are going to do the same thing. This one, if I have another one about right there. And this one is going to moving and tugging. And this one will go up a little bit, something like this. All right, and let's do one more test. Bring this one here coming over here and see if that's talking nicely and you want to actually like them to be uh, overlapping so that way you can make sure that when you bowling union um, that will be together all right so this one may be moving a little bit more and I would like to uh, use the command curve from two view and I want to select this one and this one all right we don't need the one on the bottom this one is what we need uh, and and i would like to mark them in the red color okay so this is the curve that we need let me go ahead to hiding this one and hiding this one okay so now we wanted to do is to creating the cross section so let me using the conic corner again 
and I want to snap in to the quadrant and depends on how fat you like for each of the element and how tall you would like it to have here so maybe that is one and for this one let's move it from the center or the midpoint to the quadrant right there and I also like it to be aligned toward to the direction you know on the rail and then I'm going to making a copy right here moving like this and move like this okay and of course I want them to be a little bit shorter like that and I also want it to come in down like this and you might want to get it a little bit lower so you can trim them off uh, nice and flush on the bottom all right so we got that one and I also have the same one it's going to make a copy over here like this all right so we can do a test we might need to have a little bit more angle over there but let's do a test we want to do the sweep to a uh, sweep one rail you got rail cross 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 and then you get something like this um, we can simply just cap that because supposedly they will be uh, talking together right so now what I like to do is I want to select uh, both of the curve and the object that we made and look like I make it a little bit too fast so I need to move this out a little bit and then uh, let's pick up the curve and the object that we made and that's using the rotate command we want to snap it into the zero and let's rotate it somewhere like I bought it something like this okay so double make sure that look nice and we can kind of uh, arrange the stone now for the stone I actually like to make it as a full prong so I'm gonna draw a prong approximately about this tall and then uh, simply just pipe it so this one is going to pipe it somewhere about this size and um, this type of setting is uh, in my video a lot so I'm not gonna repeating the criteria for making this one but uh, if you're interested about more about stone setting you can check out my course at the description below and then uh, we simply just want a polar array so let's go to array polar and we want to snap it into the vertex and let's use the number for four and get something like this okay and um, I also wanted to create a cylinder which is under a stone bezel I'm sorry a tube and we wanted the tube to go maybe maybe from here to here or something like that okay so now we have this tube oops a little bit too tall and we want to bring it down something like this and that will be our first set uh, I don't want it to I don't want it to bowling them yet because I might need to changing something there um, but I would like to group them so I can move them all together now in this case I like to have the prong in this orientation and then I wanted to have another one there so I'm gonna move it somewhere like here and making a cup in fact I might need to have this one just a little bit smaller okay so something like this and another one gonna go like this here all right so and we're gonna look at the side view now all three of them are the same height but if you have this one sitting in there this one gonna come in lower and it's actually stick it out in this way like that so in fact we might need to tilt it just a little bit there to look nicer um, I do not like the gap is that much there so maybe I wanted to use a share prong instead uh, let's ungroup this one and we want to delete this one and delete this one let's go ahead to move all of this coming in a little bit more 
And then instead of a two prong here, I might just need to have one prong over there and did it this one so it looked cleaner. There. Maybe I need to uh, adjust the prong to move it more close to the other side to make it a little bit more balanced. Okay, so then that is working fine. And instead of uh, redoing this one, maybe all I need to do is pick up this guy. And then we simply want to group them and mirror to the other side. Snapping into the zero, coming over here, and we just need to move it to the place. And want to ungroup this one, moving this prong coming over here, and moving this two coming down a little bit, so that will be a shared prong. I think this look much nicer. All right, so if everything look good to you, let's go ahead to uh, group this one. Okay, so I'm going to hiding all of this we just did on the top. Let's hide it. I, this is what I wanted to show you. We do have a point in between like here and here. There's a distance there. So what I like to do is simply to measure that distance. So first things I wanted to do is draw a straight line and snapping into the intersection of this guy right here. And that's connected to the zero. And that's our first line. The second line is intersection and connected to the zero as well. All right. So that gives us a two line at the front view. And then we know that if we go into the dimension tool and we can measure this one to this one, and that is a uh, 17.1 degree. All right. So what we need to do is making every other uh, element is rotated the same degree. So that's bringing back for what we have there and hiding this ring again. And then so what the, the element we are going to move is those two. And I'm going to making a copy by rotate. This is the center. This is the first point. So make sure your near is on. And then I want to making a copy by just snapping into you know, another, or you can just type it the degree that you found there. Uh, simply what we wanted to do is uh, make sure copy equal yes. So you got one there. All right. So the next things that we wanted to do is keep making the copy. If you want a three section and you can making a copy one more time from here to there. So if you like everything, let's go ahead to select everybody and we want to use a rotating tool. This time we want to rotate it from the top view and go 180 degree. So we'll get something like this. After that, let's turn on the ring that we have. So for this ring, I would like to them to to actually uh, having a better transition. Like this one may be a little bit too tall. So I'm going to delete this one and coming back with my curve. So I want to invert a selection and hiding all of them. So we can just now dealing with this guy. So let's go ahead to uh, 1D scale to make this one snapping into the quadrant snapping quadrant here and quadrant here and just bring down a little bit. We don't need a lot of them, right? So let's turn it back to the rest of the things. So sweep one rail one more time. This is your rail and, and your cross section is here, this curve and this curve. Okay. Um, then you want to close the sweep. It's time to make sure that it is lower over there so we can have a better trim there. Okay. So now let's click OK. And we need to get rid of the things in the middle. That doesn't look good and it's blocking all the light for our stone. So that's using bowling split. And this guy is going to be split by this one and this one. So then you will have this and everything else in the middle. You can delete it. Click on this one and did it uh, rest of it. It may have another piece right in the middle. This one you want to did it. You don't want any extra piece. It may cause problem for the printing. So we want to pick up this one and did it this. All right. So this will be the anniversary band 
for our tutorial today. If you are a beginner for jewelry care design, I have an online course on my website. You are more than welcome to check out the curriculum. I hope you enjoy the video. Leave the comment below. Let me know what you think. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next.